Okay, so Sebastian, co-founder of Trigger Mesh. Uh, so Bumblebee, the transformer, right? So that's how we call the, the transformation engine. Uh, the author actually of Bumblebee is uh, a developer in our, in our team who's been with Trigger Mesh since the beginning. He's contributed to Knative. Timur is out in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, he's the main author, but because of uh, you know, time zone differences, he, ca he cannot present. So I'll, I'll present Bumblebee. Bumblebee is open source. You can get it. Uh, Trigger Mesh slash Bumblebee. Uh, potentially, we could give it to the sandbox. Uh, written in Go. Uh, you deploy it with KO, it's pretty simple. Uh, simple use case, again, you have a source, cloud event type foo goes to a broker. Uh, you want to transform that cloud event. So what you do is that you end up with two triggers. There is a trigger that gets the type foo. You send it to a transformation, which is an addressable declarative API, defines how you're going to modify the, the attributes and the payload gets back to the broker, second trigger, uses the new type to actually send to the, uh, the end target. Uh, things that we faced, I mean, I, I'm sure maybe some of you faced it quite a lot, is that if, you, if you're not careful with your types, uh, you know, you can get uh, tons of uh, event loops. So, you know, definitely you need to be extremely careful. Uh, the object looks like this, kind transformation. And we have, you know, a first in the spec, we have a first section, which is context. And that has to deal with the cloud event, uh, you know, uh, I want to say attributes. So ID, source, type, things like this. You can actually store the, you know, the context of an incoming cloud event in variables, but you can also add, right, or, you know, modify. So if you want to modify a cloud event type, uh, you, you do context operation add, and then the key will be type. And doing this, you switch the, the type of the cloud event uh, on the fly. If you want to modify payload, then you define uh, in the spec, there is a section data, and then you can add a key. So you add a key full bar in this case, you set a value, you can shift a key from full to woof, or you can delete a key, right? So very, you know, basic transformation, all declarative. Uh, you know, quite, uh, quite useful. Um, so demo, uh, demo. So demo, little bit of advertising for the Google Cloud Share. Uh, Cloud Shell, can you see this? Yes. Okay, so it's a, it's a GKE cluster. I installed uh, Knity from scratch, uh, you know, latest release. And then I deployed uh, I deployed Bumblebee uh, with uh, KO. So if you look at the tree of Bumblebee, you know it's pretty straightforward. And when you deploy it with KO, then you end up with uh, you know basic transform uh, controller running in transformation namespace, right? And you're you're good to go. So what I did is I I, I launched uh, Sokai, the new version. Thank you, Scott. So, ah, and I lost network. No, can you still hear me? We can hear you. Okay. So what's going on with my Sokai? Oh, strange. Right, okay, so that's the demo god. XIP server cannot be found. Uh, try HTTP, not HTTPS. The error is name not resolved, which suggests that XIP.io has decided to take a little break. Ah, Jesus. Uh, okay. You can try switching to NIP.io. I've heard that maybe that's slightly more reliable, but it seems like these things are um, apparently, you know, you get what you pay for slightly less. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so fine. Let me show you the, uh, so we're going to go in the, in the config, you know, basics, basic samples. You, you'll, 
in the Bumblebee repo, you'll find the basic sample with the, the diagram that I showed. What I was going to show you is a basic, uh, you know, a pink source, all right? Pink source that has, you know, first uh, and last name, Alice Smith, right? So we can, uh, you know, we can apply the, we can apply the source, right? And maybe while we do this, um, so we can apply the source. Of course, we have, uh, you know, a broker, right? That's running, uh, perfect. And then if we look at uh, the triggers, so I have two triggers. Uh, the basic ping goes to uh, the transformation. So you see how, you know, the transformation can be set here as a, you know, subscriber here in the, in the trigger. So it goes to the, uh, you know, the transformation service, if you wish. And then it, the, the, the response comes back to the, to the broker. And then, you know, what happens is that you need a, the second trigger to actually, uh, you know, send it to uh, to Sakai, right? I mean, here it's commented so that I'm gonna get all all events, uh, you know, all events display in Sakai uh, simultaneously. Uh, I don't think I. Okay, so they're still in place. And now, if we look at the the transformation object, right? So the first transformation that we can do, you know, is simply hey, I want to, to modify the cloud event type of the ping and I switch to trigger mesh transformation ping source, right? So it's not the K-native ping anymore. We just switch the cloud event type and then we add, you know, a new key in the payload. So, you know, middle, the key will be middle and the value will be Maria, right? So if you do this, then you're modifying your thing. So we just apply. All right, so we apply the transformation. It's a CRD, you get the idea. So get transformation, you know, we see the object. It has, you know, uh, an address here. Let's see if our Sokai has started. Ah, oh, yes. A little bit of luck from the demo god, right? So what should we see on the Sokai? On the Sokai, we're gonna see the two events because I didn't I didn't remove the, the ping ones. So every minute we're going to see the, the original ping event. Right, we're gonna see that type, and we also should see a, a transform event uh, with a new key, middle with the value Maria, and a, a new type. All right, so if we wait one minute, you can still hear me. Yes, okay. There you go, demo gods are with me. Okay, so can I zoom that? So perfect, we see the first event, dev K native sources ping. You know, that's the original, original payload, Alice Smith. And now we see the second event that's been transformed, key, Maria, and a new, a new type. All right, so events being transformed on the, on the, on the fly. Uh, let's look at a second transformation. Uh, this one again, you know, the, so we switch the type, uh, there are different things you could store, uh, you know, the source, you could store the ID, which could be very useful and so on, you know, uh, here, second transformation, we're shifting a key. So the key, which is first in the payload becomes K native, right? So it's going to be K native, you know, uh, Alice, right? So we apply, uh, we apply that one. And I'm sure that you know by now you have you know you you got you got the idea right. So uh, you know we need to wait another minute, and we're gonna see that uh, what's that transformation that I said. So the the key first is going to shift to K native, right? So we're going to see K native Alice, and we're gonna still see last Smith middle Marian. I should have put less than a minute. I don't know if we can do less than a minute in the pink source. Can we? Oh no, it's a cron tab. Well, while we're waiting, you can show off the Sakai filter feature. If you click on the upper left. Oh, the new version. And then you can add in the attribute you're filtering on is maybe type. 
right. includes trigger mesh, and then you should see only the right. transformed events in Sakai. Thank you. See, I didn't even know. And then push uh, add filter. I, I add filter. And then this will dynamically update the display that you see. And so, so the idea here is that you could kind of play with what a trigger might do in production on a stream of events. Yep. Cool. So now you see, and we got our event with our shift. So now we shifted from first Alice to K native Alice. Right? Is it big enough? I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So I guess I guess you all you all understand what what this is doing, right? And and it just works. <laughs> so last one, a delete. You know, of course we can we can delete keys. So you know, apply. Uh, I'll do the delete and then one last one, which is which is nice with um, uh, the actual cloud event context. So this one we're going to delete. We're going to delete the key last, right? So what we should see is K native Alice, middle Maria, and last Smith should dis should disappear. And this is useful to us because we've we've developed at Trigger Mesh a, a set of uh, event syncs. Uh, we actually call them targets, and our event syncs actually accept a particular uh, you know uh, event types, right? So you know if, for example, we get GitHub <clears throat> and we want to talk to Twilio, the GitHub events they come in as GitHub K native, and then we need to send them to our target, which takes in you know tri uh, Twilio the trigger mesh, uh, so we need to transform the events and uh, and set the type in addition to the payload, of course. There you go, and now you see we have deleted the key. All right. So the last one I wanna I wanna show you is uh, is one which uh, actually here uh, we can store what, an attribute of an incoming cloud event. So here you see that in the section con text, we are doing a store operation and we're going to store the value of the, the cloud event source, right, uh, in a key here within the context of that, uh, of that uh, manifest, uh, we're going to set it as dollar source, right? And then I, f further uh, down here in the data section, I now add a new key, foobar, and I set that new foobar key to the value of that, you know, incoming cloud event source, right? So this is just showing that you can you can store incoming attributes, uh, which can be which can be handy. So apply dash f uh, trans three. <coughs> you go. So now what we should see in the next event is that we should see that we're going to have a, an additional key, which is going to be foobar. And it's going to have the value of the actual uh, cloud event source. Make sense? So you can, you know, mix things. So I actually don't know. Can we can we put less than a minute in the in the cron tab? I think you need to use the heartbeat source for that. Oh, oh okay. I was just looking it up. Okay, so meanwhile, you know, the repo, Trigger Mesh, Bumblebee, open source, uh, Apache software license. Ooh, oh no, okay, we put them under licenses. Okay, why is it under licenses? Is because when we when we try to get things certified with Red Hat, we, we need to put a EULA and a, a license under licenses directory. But anyway, it's Apache software license. We have a release process. Uh, so this gets tagged, uh, you know, automatically when we release new software, there you go. So we have our bot Cyber Woodford. It's not the, it's not the K-native, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, actions. Uh, yeah, and deploy with KO. So a simple KO apply should do it for you. You'll get the CRD, the controller, and then you can start, you know, doing your, your transformation. If we go back to our Soka, here you go. So the last, you see that we now just added a key Fubar, and it's set to the value of the, you know, the, the cloud event source. All right. 
So, you know, all of this, hopefully what you're seeing is, you know, it's, uh, it's quite straightforward, but it's actually, you know, I find it extremely uh, neat, actually clever and super clean. <laughs> Uh, you know, basically manipulating cloud events on the fly with a declarative API. All right. And that's it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for presenting that. Uh, there are a ton of comments here on the chat box. And given how far we're into the meetup, I'm not going to go into breakout rooms. Uh, so please feel free to unmute, starting with Jax, who has his hand raised. Hey, Sebastian. Um, yeah. I have one question. Is it is it limited to cloud events? Is, no. Is there some reason? Okay, so. No. Neat. Yeah, it could be anything. Yeah, I, I smell future controllers being written this way, is, is what I was thinking. A lot of controllers just take one bit of JSON, move yeah. the fields around, and spray out another piece of JSON. Yeah. Yeah. So we and and you know I did it with a, I did it with a, a broker and so on. But of course you could just curl straight into the the endpoint of the of the service, right? You know, it's pretty, and it could be yeah, any any JSON. Thanks. So should I go back? Should I go through all the questions, or you all got your questions answered? Uh, maybe we can call them uh, one by one. And... Shift, a question from Alex. Shift, uh, sh yeah, shift replaces, uh, ch modifies the key. It keeps the value, but it, it shifts the key to something else. Yeah, right now, you know, operations, we could totally see adding additional operations, but right now that's, you know, th those are the operations that we needed. So, you know, add, especially add, delete, and, and use the uh, use the, the cloud event uh, context. Thank you, VLA. Yeah, I didn't do anything, actually. It's all Timor. Uh, yeah, I have the filter on. Yeah, don't do event loops. Be careful with your event types. Yeah, okay. That's it, thank you all very much. I think there were two more things. There was one comment about testing um, and whether there, whether you had any patterns for, you know, as you start to build more complex transformations, making sure they work right. Uh, honestly, I don't think we have, I don't think we have uh, testing for the actual, you know, I'm totally going to punt on that one. Uh, so we've worked, I mean, on testing. So some of you know, uh, some of the folks in the in the team. So uh, Antoine, Antoine Cotten works for, for Trigger Mesh. We've done a lot of work internally on, on using uh, Ginkgo, Ginkgo for end-to-end -end testing. So we have end-to-end -end testing for our sources and targets, and also some of those integrations, right? Uh, but we don't have yet end-to-end -end testing for purely for Bumblebee. I don't think we do. Um, I actually meant something different. I meant consumers of Bumblebee who are writing, starting to write code effectively in these YAML files. Right. May want to test that their code that is the Bumblebee transformations actually does what they want. Um, yeah. I think that was Alex's point. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so that may be something that um, there may be, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, open People source co contribution. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it's quite it's quite fun, you know. It's it's a little thing that's that's quite powerful, and uh, yeah, I mean, when uh, you know we, we we discussed this internally, and then Timur implemented it, and you know we think it's 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 super clean and you know very useful. I I like it. Um, oh, the, one other thing I was going to point out was I noticed your releases um, have. Um, the binaries, but if you use co-resolve, you can get a YAML that's all of the config bundled into one chunk um, with references to like gcr.io, if that's where you're storing your containers. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what we use for Knative releases. Yeah. Um, 
Um, I don't know if that's a thing you want to do, but I figured I'd mention that. No, we should. We should. We should. That makes it just a cube control apply some URL from GitHub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally, totally fair. We should do it. That's that's uh, that's a no mission. Uh, I actually ran into a KO a KO problem uh, <laughs> when I was preparing for the demo. So, so yes, we should add the manifest to the release. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Carlos has some comments. Do you want to unmute something about metrics? Uh, no, yeah, I don't know if we have time, but um, do you have a metrics endpoint or do you push metrics about getting stats about transformation that didn't work or errors or how many shifts or operations you're doing? Mm, no, I don't think we're, um, I don't think we're exposing a metrics uh, endpoint on that one. To get the health of the controller. Does, does it scale horizontally? Is it stateless, I'm guessing? Uh, good question. I don't even know how it is. It is it, well. Is it just using a Kenyan service under the hood? It's it's a deployment. Oh, yeah, deployment. that's what I, that's what I was. No, 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 no. Actually, the the controller. Hold on. I'm looking. See, hey, Maria, what you do when you mute me? <laughs> yeah, no, the transformations are actually pure deployments, right? So that we don't have we don't have the auto scaling out of the box. Uh, Any reason why they need to be deployments instead of getting native services? No, no. Okay. I'll have, I'll have to check with Timur actually because we should we should be. Hold on, let me check. No, 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 my bad, my bad. Yeah, the transformation are K-native services. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the transformation th themselves have the, the auto-scaling of K-native um, out of okay. the box. So it's a matter, for the metrics thing, then maybe it's a matter of adding a open telemetry and do the pushing yeah. of the metrics. Yeah. I'll, put, I'll put an issue. Actually, if it's a K-native service, you may be able to get some of them just out of the box with the service PKG. level metrics. Yeah. yeah Response true. code and latency and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Kind of like mesh, mesh type of metrics, not business inside. Yeah. So, you know, we think it, we think it's pretty cool. Definitely, you know, there is potential oh, for oh. more work and. There was another question Leonel is asking, I think the same question I asked uh, before in the chat about multi-tenancy. Any thoughts about multi-tenancy of that, of that controller, maybe isolating that, that store or that state? Or uh, so we haven't, we haven't dealt with multi-tenancy on, on the transformation on Bumblebee. Uh, right now, actually, uh, Antoine has, has moved all our sources to being multi-tenant. So if you, if you look at all the trigger mesh AWS sources, they are now all multi-tenant, uh, but we haven't done it for uh, we haven't we haven't looked at it for uh, Bumblebee. Yeah. If I'm understanding correctly, the store is in the context of a single event. It's not applied to things in the future, right? No, no. There's no persistency in that one. Yeah. Yeah. So this is stateless. Yeah. So yeah, I know, but I don't trust it. Be, Shouldn't be an issue. Uh, yeah, I'm not even. Sure, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure what multi-tenant transformation. I mean, you could use a single pod and handle oh. multiple namespaces, um, but since you're using a K-native service, um, you know, you'd get small incremental savings, not. You know, like, oh, hey, we have these pods running all the time, and most of them resources. are resources. Yeah. Now, it may be that IBM, you know, running an enormous cloud actually cares about saving those, uh, you know, those pennies from each namespace, but. <laughs> cool. 